I'm not telling you what you should do with your healing. Like I'm not, what you do with your healing is your choice. I'm only telling you what I would do with my healing. And, I've, and what you would do if you were at one with God with your healing. Because you will feel these emotions that I feel about that. Now at the moment you do not feel those emotions. So you need to choose to do what you want to do. But I am saying to you that once you're at one with God, the first priority in your questions will be, why isn't God already doing it? That will be your first priority. I would refuse to help a person who only wants their headache taken away. Yes. Why? What's creating their headache? It's a suppression usually of sadness, not wanting to cry. That's usually what creates their headache, right? They have deep sadness in them. They don't want to cry. They're fighting it. They're resisting it, shoving it back down again. And, and if they don't want to have that discussion, healing their headache is a waste of time. And I don't want to waste my time, I don't know about you, but my time is precious, you know, it's the only resource actually that I have. And although I have eternity with it, I want to use it in the most possible, in the best possible process, just like God does, right? In the most economical way. And so you will get to a point where you realise that, hang on a sec, me healing a physical illness when I know there's an emotional problem is not an effective use of my time. And to be honest with you, you know what it's doing? It's taking away their law of attraction. Their law of attraction is, this headache is happening because they're suppressing their emotions, they're suppressing their sadness and they don't want to cry, it's their blockage of resistance. That's what's causing their headache. They've come to me to fix their headache, they've come to me to fix the effect. God does not ever fix effects. God always addresses causes. So if I want to fix an effect, who am I going to be connecting to? Not God. I'll be connecting to someone else. Now it might sound great, that I'm healing them. Oh, I've healed their headache. Isn't it wonderful? I've gone away. Such, they weren't such a wonderful healer. But I've got a question. What's my motive? My motive isn't the same as God's, that's for sure. Because if it was the same as God's, I'd be addressing the cause, not the effect. And this is where we need to start addressing ourselves as healers. And looking at what God would do compared to what you would do. You see what I'm saying? Can you see how challenging the next year is going to be for those who actually come to the <laughs> sessions on healing and mediumship. Because everything is going to be based around our desire to do as God do, does. Right? Now we might not yet be at one with God, but at least we can begin to have a desire to do as God does. We can start developing that within ourselves. If I have an emotion within me that I want to heal the person, irrespective of God's laws and how those laws are affecting that person, then I am actually now usurping God's laws. I'm trying to actually go above God's laws, which in itself has an emotion attached to it, of me wanting either glorification or wanting a feeling from that person that I'm addicted to. Most of the time that feeling might be a feeling of glory or a feeling, oh, I've helped them. Isn't that wonderful? You know, that the feeling you get when you've helped somebody, you may be addicted to, and that is not love. To be addicted to any feeling is not love particularly if there's a feeling from the other person. It is not love. So I may be choosing to do or take those actions in disharmony with God's laws because of emotions within me. And I need to look really sincerely, if I'm a healer or a medium, I need to look really sincerely inside of myself as to why my motive would be to do something that I know is not harmonious with what God would do. Because the question is always, is God already doing it? If not, then he doesn't want to. Why wouldn't he want to? He's always love. If God's always love and always wants to, but doesn't do it, then what's going on? There's something in the person preventing this action from occurring that's disharmonious with love. That's what I need to address. And this is why it's so important to look at those issues. Does that make sense, Karen? It's a really important issue to, to actually grasp. Yeah.